So I was actually thinking, earlier this week, I got a Christmas card through my letterbox that said to Carol and Nigel and the boys. Now, I'm, I'm not Nigel. Uh, I'm also not Carol. Um, and it got me thinking, like, have you ever written to someone and thought, I'm not sure they've got this. I'm not sure they've received my letter. I've not heard back. <coughs> have you ever texted someone and seen it says red? And you've been left on red. Or if you're on WhatsApp, you've got the two grey ticks or the two blue ticks. And you don't hear back from them. Or have you even spoken to someone on the phone and you've actually gone, I'm not sure they're really listening. I can just tell. I can hear a keyboard clattering in the background or I can hear the TV or something. I'm not sure they're listening. Their attention is elsewhere. The best way to communicate with someone is in person. <coughs> Those other ways, they work, but the best way to communicate with someone has got to be in person, to get right alongside them, make sure they're listening, make sure they understand. And we've heard this morning in our readings, in the Christmas story, that God used to talk to people through prophets, but now he talks through his son. That's what Christmas is. It's God coming in person. God coming to talk to the world. Now you might say, wait a minute, says his son, not him. Let's look at some of those verses again. We've heard this morning, being in the very nature God. We've heard that he was the radiance of, the very radiance of God. We've heard the word Emmanuel sung in our songs, which means God with us. Make no mistake, this is God coming in person into the world. God himself entering history. He came to speak with people, to teach them, to live with them. But more than that, God's message has always been about bringing people back to him. Maybe you felt it. You felt that times when you're distant from God, when you're not really living the way God wants you to. You're not even thinking about God. We've all turned from him and lived lives our own way. And God's message is come back to him and that he would make a way for you to do that we can't do it by ourselves well that message became a gift at Christmas when Jesus came that message became a gift God came in person to make purification for our sins to make a way for us to get back to him by dying on a cross now, when we think about gifts, I, kind of, I want us to think there's three parts to it. You've got the gift itself. You've got the recipient. And then you've got the gift giver. And how great the gift is doesn't really depend on the person receiving the gift. Yeah, they, they might influence it, but only because the person giving the gift feels a certain way about that person. The gift giver has always got to be more important than the gift receiver when we're thinking about that gift. It's the giver who determines what the gift is. It's the giver who pays for the gift. And God gifted us forgiveness. He gifted us a way back to relationship with him. Not because we deserve it, but because he wanted to do that. He loved us. And it is exactly that. It is a gift. When we think of the Christmas story, it is a gift from God. You don't become a Christian to get saved. You are a Christian when you accept the gift of God that he came in person to purify you and save you from your sins. So God came to earth that first Christmas. As Joey said, he didn't stay in the manger. He lived a life that led him to the cross for you. But more than that, he didn't stay on the cross or even in the tomb. No, Christ is seated in the throne of heaven 
If we look at the reading that Joy gave in Philippians 2, verses 8 to 11, or Hebrews 1, verse 3, that is Christmas. That is the point of Christmas. God entered history. God became flesh and blood. But that was just the beginning. As you, so he didn't send a message or a rule book. He came in person. And as you look at the manger, as you look at the Christmas story this Christmas, don't let yourself dwell there. Don't just look at the pretty pictures of a stable and a baby in a manger. Think about who that child is. What he came to do and where he is now. And rejoice. Merry Christmas. And we're going to sing Joy to the World. <laughs>